Hey everyone, in this week's episode, I'm gonna cover one of the questions I get asked most of the time when I go out and do presentations, and that's how to use the BV512 digital vocoder. Now, though there are some patches in the factory sound bank of Reason, which actually make this process easy, I wanna cover a little bit of the basics of what a vocoder is and how to connect it so you get an understanding of how to use this in your productions. I'm gonna show you how to do this in Reason and a little bit in Record as well. So let's get right into it. Before we get started with any patching or routing, I want to explain what a vocoder is and how it works. The word vocoder comes from a combination of the words voice and encoder, and it is technically an analysis or resynthesis system, which is typically used for speech effects. The input is passed through a multiband filter, and each band is passed through an envelope follower. The control signals from the envelope followers are communicated to the decoder. The decoder then applies these amplitude control signals to corresponding filters in the resynthesizer. Well, that's a pretty big and ridiculous description. Let's get into it and see how it actually works. First, let's create a BV512 digital vocoder, and let's take a look at the connections on the back panel. The two main jack connections we're going to be concerned with here are the carrier input and the modulator input. The carrier input is going to be the sound that will be modified by your voice, which is usually a synthesizer like the Subtractor, Thor, or Maelstrom synths. And of course, this could be some other source like a sample, but let's get started with the basics first. For the best sounding results, I usually use a sound that has a lot of harmonic content, for example, a sawtooth or a pulse width waveform. The modulator input is going to be your voice or a sample of a voice sound when you're using Reason, of course, because you don't have an audio input yet. Of course, this could also be some other source like a drum beat, but again, basics first. As I said, when you're using Reason, you'll have to use a sample of a voice to be the modulator. If you're using the Record Reason Duo, you could just use a microphone and vocode your voice live. Looking at the graphics that are on those two connections, we can see that they correspond to what we just described. The carrier input has a graphic of a keyboard, or a synth sound, and the modulator input has a graphic of a microphone, which would either be a sample of your voice or a connected microphone. Let's create a basic vocoder patch using the subtractor as the carrier input, and this voice sample that I've got here playing back from an NNXT. This could also be an NN19, a Rex loop player, or a redrum. And that will be our modulator input. This is how you would do it if you were using just Reason. Now the one thing that most people miss is that just making the connections and playing back the sample of the voice will not get you the desired result, even though you see these modulator levels going up and down on the BV-512. In order for the synth that is connected to the carrier input to actually produce sound, well, you're going to need to either play some notes on a controller keyboard or draw some into a clip like this. Word vocoder comes from a combination of the words voice and encoder, and it is technically an analysis of resynthesis system. Word vocoder comes from a combination of the words voice and encoder and it is technically an analysis of resynthesis system. In Record, the setup would look like this. Connect the direct out of the audio track to the modulator input of the BV-512, play some notes on the subtractor while speaking into the microphone, and you're going to be in robot voice heaven. The amount of bands that you select on the front panel of the BV-512 is going to change how intelligible or recognizable the sound is. More bands equals a much more realistic sound, less bands, and you're going to be in Kraftwerk land. This is what it sounds like when I have more bands selected. You can adjust which frequencies you want to enhance or isolate or diminish or cut from the modulator input 
using the frequency band level adjust sliders, which are right here. Now play around with those until you get the sound that you're after. As I mentioned in the intro, there are vocoder combinator patches in the factory sound bank of Reason, which already have some of the routing work done for you. And this is how you would connect those and use them in your productions. Remember that in order to hear the results, you need to play or trigger notes on those combinators, and you may need to create a sequencer track for the device depending on how you loaded it in. To do this, just right-click on the device in the rack and select Create Track for Combinator right here. Now I have my voice and I've recorded it by just connecting it to the combinator. And a track. Experiment with different sounds connected to the modulator input for other effects as well. A common one is to use a drum loop as a modulator source like this. Or you could use a guitar as the source for the carrier input if you want to get that Peter Frampton style spoken guitar sound, kind of like this. Well, I hope that this week's episode demystified how to use the BV-512 in your own productions. And I'd love to hear your results, so please send me some musical clips or links to musical clips at my email address. And please remember to keep sending in those requests for future episodes so I can cover some of your questions. And stay tuned as I will be covering some of the new features in Reason 5 and Record 1.5 in future episodes. And there's a lot of new features for me to show and discuss with you. Well, I'm James Bernard for Propellerhead Software, and I'll see you all in a week. Bye.